Hey everybody, Chris and Mary Coase here with another video for you. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I use Zoom for my teaching businesses and how you can work with a team and functions that you can start to use as you grow your business. And this is really the reason why Zoom is so powerful and so great. So in order to really dive into this and give you an idea of how you can use Zoom in the best way, I'm going to share my screen with you and I'm going to show you inside of my personal account. So here we are inside of my Zoom account. You can see that we're actually recording this right now through Zoom. And that's one of the great features of Zoom is that in just seconds, you can click, start a meeting, launch the meeting, and automatically have it set up to record. And that's what we've done is that every account that's linked to our main Zoom account starts recording automatically. Now, you might not understand what I mean, first of all, when I say the main Zoom account, because when I say main Zoom account, I'm talking about the fact that I have multiple Zoom accounts. In fact, uh, we can go over and we can see how many users we have right now. Um, you know, we've paid for about 25 different licenses. We have eight licenses right now that we can actually add to someone else. So you can see that we've got a decent amount of different, uh, you know, emails and, and people listed here. And these are all users of our account. Now they each have their own Zoom account, but all of their Zoom accounts are under our main Zoom account. And let me show you exactly what that looks like. So if we go to this account, for example, Jeff LeClaire, so he's one of the teachers who works with us. And if we go over to the settings and meeting, we can go down to the bottom and we can see that we've assigned scheduling privileges for this account to both of these accounts here. So both of these accounts will be able to create meetings for this account. And that's because this is a child account and the parent account is the account that our company controls. Now also Jeff, the account that we're looking at now is one of our managers and Jeff can schedule for all of these other accounts right here. And this makes it really easy because I can just add another person who is able to schedule for him or add another person who he can schedule for and it means that we can work as a team and I don't have to be the one who schedules all of these meetings. Now, we've also linked all of our Zoom accounts to a scheduling program, and I'll leave the link to that scheduling program under this video. But uh, when, you've, when you link to that scheduling program, that means that you can actually just schedule in your scheduling program and in Zoom, it will automatically create that meeting very, very convenient and very cool for working with teams. Another great feature that I like to use is this, allow live streaming meetings. And you might notice that sometimes I go live on Facebook or YouTube and it will say chrisamericos.com powered by Zoom. And that's because we've actually set this up so that there's a watermark for every time that we live stream. So. Right now, you might be asking, uh, Chris, but I've never seen any of this stuff before, you know, user management, users, what's this really all about? Well, this opens up when you have a certain type of account. And one of the things that a lot of people don't know about using Zoom as a team or for your team is this admin dashboard, which really is super powerful and gives us a lot of uh, information and data. So as you can see, I've just opened this up and we can check out all of the different accounts. We can see where people are participating from. We can see what kinds of devices they're using. Um, you know, we can see trends that are happening in our business. And we can see over here, for example, we've used 450 gigabytes of recording storage. Now there's a 26 gigabyte limit and we've clearly exceeded this limit. And what's interesting is that right now, Zoom doesn't really penalize you for that. They don't make you uh, pay more for that storage. They offer you the option to pay for it, 
but they're only going to remove it after it's been sitting there for a while. I really think that in the near future, Zoom is going to correct this issue because you're using up a lot of space on their cloud server when you're you know, just leaving those recordings in there. Um, so what we've done actually is we've created a custom integration and we can set that up for you too, if you're interested. Uh, again, I'll put a link under this video and you can get in contact us, with us and we can set that up. But what I've done is created this custom integration where every time you have a Zoom meeting, that meeting is automatically saved into your Google Drive account. And this integration works with other programs too, not only Google Drive, it works with OneDrive, with Dropbox, with Yandex Disk, with, I mean, there's about 150 or 200 different programs that it works with. So if you already pay for storage somewhere else, or if you already have a Google business account, you know, for a G Suite, for example, if you have your own website, then you probably have this already. Um, then it, it makes sense to just save everything straight over there from Zoom because you're already paying for that. And with the example of Google Suite, G Suite uh, for businesses, you have an unlimited amount of storage over there. So when you're already paying for unlimited storage, why pay again inside of Zoom? So again, if you're interested in that custom integration where automatically all of your recordings, all the files get sent over to Google Drive, then you can get in touch with me and we can set that up for you. Now, this dashboard is just one of these uh, pieces up here because we can go to meetings and we can see right now that I'm actually doing this meeting through Zoom, Zoom for teaching businesses. And there's only one participant, me. And, but we can also see that there are two teachers that are teaching lessons right now, as I'm recording, as we're speaking, they're teaching. And you can see the topics, you can see who's teaching, you can see how many people are in there. And you can also see, for example, I'm screen sharing and it shows us that. Um, so you can see a lot of information here. Now let's actually jump into one of these meetings and I can really show you how deep the data goes. And this is where it gets really, really cool. So if we jump into Leanne's meeting that she's having right now, we can actually see a list of all of the participants. We can see their usernames here. We can see which device they're on. We can see their IP address. We can see their location in the world. I mean, this stuff is really powerful. We can see what kind of microphone they're using. Uh, we can see which data center they're using. So even their camera. Um, so, you know, this is really techie stuff and most of the time, you're not going to need most of this data, but it's great that it's there and that you have access to it. Now, another cool feature inside of this dashboard when we go to meetings is that we can join live as an assistant right here. So by clicking this button, I can actually join Leanne's meeting right now and I could assist her. You know, sometimes the electricity goes out. Sometimes servers go down. Sometimes websites shut off. And it's nice for you to have another option where somebody can just jump in, either you or an admin, because if you have another account user, like a child account under your parent account, like we talked about earlier, if you have another admin, then they can come in and do this if you give them permission to. So you can decide if you want other people to have this option or not. Another interesting thing is that, you know, sometimes there is an error inside of a Zoom meeting and the, the host or the teacher might get kicked out. And now you have all the students just sitting in there waiting and kind of wondering uh, what's gonna happen next. So what you could do is you could just click this button and you could end that meeting. And that's going to kick everybody out. It's going to close that meeting. And now you don't have people sitting around um, you know, with, with, without guidance, let's say. So this is really, really great uh, data to use and in there's it's really a great tool to use and it's a part of zoom that most people don't know about but uh, we've used it a lot in our teaching business so let's go back over to our main zoom of course you know where we have the personal tab here we have the profile meetings webinars recording settings and that's just for your one account and since i'm logged in through my parent account right now, that's just going to control my parent account, my personal account. But if I want to control what happens with other accounts, I need to go down here to the admin tab. 
And you can see that I have these settings open right now. And when I go down, there are some settings that I can still turn on or off, but some settings are locked. You can see right here, it says locked by admin. And when I showed you earlier that there are child accounts under my parent account, what I can do is I can lock a setting and then all of the child accounts that are connected to my parent account will automatically have these settings too. So for example, I want all of the teachers when they have a, a lesson, I want, it, I want all of those meetings to have a passcode. I want all of them to uh, embed the passcode for a one-click join. You know, so some of these settings I want to force onto the other accounts. And that's how you can do it. You can actually go in and lock them. Now, um, you might be thinking, well, how do I do that here? It won't unlock or lock, right? It's, it's already locked, it says. Well, you can do that in your account management. You can do that in role management. You can really get deep into who can do what and who can control what. And that's really uh, an important part of using Zoom for your business. We can do the same thing with meetings. And we can also go and look at the profile of this person and make some edits there. But now let's go to our account management and let's go to recording management. So when we look at the recording management, you can see that here we have this big list of all of these different recordings, all of these different lessons that we've had. You know, right now in my account, we have this, you know, 466 gigabytes of usage and it's way over the 26 uh, gigabyte limit that we're supposed to have since we have 25 or 26 accounts. And um, you can see that we have a total of 687, you know, lessons or sessions recorded here. So what we do is we automatically have these files sent over to Google Drive through a custom integration that we created that I told you about already. Again, click the link under this video if you're interested in uh, us setting that up for you. But let's just go in and see what kinds of files we actually get from here. So I'm going to go to, uh, let's see, let's go to this one, Satch, H, uh, Satch C. So um, this is one of our teachers here, Claire. And you can see that there's five files. So if I go over here to the files, you can see that we have the speaker view, the gallery view, the audio, the audio transcript, and the chat file. So in our custom integration, when we save everything over to Google Drive, all of these files get saved, all of them. So you can imagine the, the amount of time that it saves you. If you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of files and recordings, and they're just happening all the time without your participation, you know, if your business is automated, like it should be, then all of these files will get saved over to your Google Drive and you don't have to spend any time messing with them. So um, the speaker view, of course, is just like when one person is talking and maybe it switches who's talking. So you just see one person's screen at a time. Whereas the gallery view will show you multiple people in multiple boxes on the screen. Uh, for example, in the video that I'm recording right now, I'm sharing the screen. So there will also be a shared screen and speaker view together. That'll be another file that will automatically be created by Zoom. You can also have the shared screen with gallery view, and that might be another file that gets saved automatically. The audio only is really useful if you're making a podcast because you can just take this file and upload it to wherever you're promoting your podcast and you automatically have it. You don't really need to do anything. Of course, you could cut the beginning or the end. You could cut out mistakes if there were some, but typically this file is just ready to go because it started recording as soon as you launched the meeting and it stopped at the end. Now, another really cool file that you get is the audio transcript. And as you see, I just clicked on it and it downloaded. And when we open up this audio transcript, it's going to show us everything that people said during that session. In fact, let me just open it up and uh, share that part of my screen with you. So let's go over and share that. So now you should be able to see 
every line here. So you can see everything that Claire said. Then you can see when other students were speaking, like here. And Zoom's um, AI, Zoom's artificial intelligence that they have that's reading this, that's creating the audio transcript, is actually very, very powerful and accurate. So uh, just imagine what this can do for your website. If you want to do SEO, search engine optimization, then typically you need to have lots of text that's related to the keywords that you teach about or that you want to promote. Well, if you do a live video or a live call with someone and the audio transcript is generated automatically, then you already have all of this text saved. So you can just copy the text from that file, put it onto your website, and you have amazing SEO for your website. You have all of the text of all of the words that you said. I mean, that's pretty impressive, right? So that's another really cool feature that I like about Zoom. Um, now you can get down here and you can go into different integrations. You can also do branding and you know, it allows you to add in some basic HTML. I mean, you could put CSS or JavaScript in here also. Um, and these are for landing pages, headers, footers. Most of this stuff, like I said, CSS custom right here. Most of this stuff you're not gonna use very often, but when we get to meetings, here's a really cool feature of Zoom. After the meeting is finished, you can automatically send your participants to your website. So what I've done in my teaching businesses is I have this URL. Every time the students finish a lesson with the teacher, they are sent to this page on my website and they can leave a rating of the teacher. So students can rate the lesson that they just had and they can write notes and they can let us know if something is bad or good in that lesson. And it really means that uh, teachers know that students can report this and that we, the management of our companies and these specific teaching businesses, it lets them know that we are going to read it. We're going to give them that attention. We're going to actually listen to what they have to say. And we do, we go through it and we check it. So um, when you have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of students um, who are attending lessons every day, or in our case, several thousand students who attend lessons, then it's really important to have a way for them to give you this feedback uh, in a really easy, intuitive way. Now, um, there are some other things that you can do, like right here, you can have a live streaming watermark. I mentioned that before, and here's where we've created that. So yeah, I hope that looking inside my account kind of gives you an idea of the business tools that are included inside of Zoom that a lot of people don't talk about. Um, you know, this is one of the, this is another one of the things that I've already mentioned, but you can see it right here, force sub accounts to use the same branding settings. So, you know, any of the accounts that are under my parent account will also use this. They'll also force the participants after the meeting to go over to this web page on our, on our website. And that's really, really convenient and really useful. So, I mean, there's a lot of settings in here and we could go through all of them. I mean, we could go through the general account settings. We could go through the billing. We could go through all of this. But um, for now, for most of you out there, I think that this is going to give you a good idea of how you can use this tool for your teaching business. Now, I know it can seem overwhelming and kind of complicated at first, but that's why we actually provide these business tools and assistance with setting things up. So if you feel like you need help setting up your Zoom account for your business or connecting Zoom to your scheduling program or connecting Zoom to your Google Drive so all of the recordings automatically go there, um, this is something that we can help you with. And in general, if you found this video to be useful, then you should go over to our website, teaching-revolution.com and you can join my free program where I tell people how you can start your own teaching business. It's a free training, uh, free for seven days. And you can go through this program 
and you can see step by step how I went from not being a teacher at all to having an offline school to having an online school and then having multiple online teaching businesses. And we have been able to make a lot of money, of course, out of this, but also we've been able to reach a lot of students and get a lot of results. And if that's something that you're looking to do, to reach a lot of people and for that to be profitable for you and for your team so that you can hire a big team of teachers, you can have assistants and administrators and managers, then I really suggest joining our free program. I have a paid coaching program also where you can join live calls with me and you can go through step-by-step -step instructions about how to set everything up that you need in order to have a teaching business or to take your current teaching business to the next level. Because let's face it, in today's world, teachers are moving online and students are moving online and there's a lot of new skills and new tools to learn. So it's really helpful to have a guide and an instruction manual that you can follow. So I really hope that this video has helped you uh, understand how to use Zoom a little bit better or uh, understand some functions of uh, using Zoom with a business. And I really highly suggest that you go over and check out our free seven day training. Thanks a lot for watching and I hope to see you very soon. Uh, if you're interested in joining our live coaching calls, we have a special program, a special deal right now where you can join uh, for one month just for $97. And that's a really big discount because uh, usually we charge several thousand dollars to work with people. And um, so this is, this is a really big opportunity and I would be really happy to help you out with your business. So I hope that this video has been useful for you. I hope that you've learned something new about using Zoom for uh, teaching business or for helping to grow your teaching business, helping to work with a team inside of your teaching business. And if you have any other questions, feel free to contact us or click on the links below this video. I highly suggest that you join our free seven day program if you're just getting started with teaching and the business side of teaching. So um, thanks again, and I will see everybody next time. Bye-bye.